Am I in frame? You're in frame. All right. And yeah, we are recording. That's all I can do. That's all. <laughs> all right, we did a civic corrosion. I'm Cody. That's Zane, Jacob, and Beth. Um, there's two types of acids that cause corrosion. Inorganic acids, inorganic acids that include hydrochloric acid, hydrofluoric acid, nitric acid, phosphoric acid, sulfuric acid. And there's the organic forms, that's formic slash methanic acid, acidic and ethonic, propionic and propionoic, and naphthenic. Um, acid corrosion is a huge issue because the bulk of metals exposed in the industry are more susceptible to severe attack in the acidic pH range rather than the alkaline range. Uh, I did hydro hydrochloric acid. Um, hydrochloric acid, when in the aqueous state, is an extremely corrosive inorga inorganic acid that deteriorates a wide variety of metals. Um, it is one of the types of acid that the human body uses to break down food. food. Um, hydrochloric acid uh, deteriorates metals in a number of different ways. When the acid reacts with the metal, uh, hydrogen and chloride is produced, and if the metal retains the chloride, it will lead to severe stress corrosion cracking. And the produced hydrogen can lead to hydrogen attack or hydrogen embrittlement, and the metal might, may show corrosion in the form of blistering, pitting, cracking, or flaking. Um, intentional exposure of uh, metals to hydrochloric acid is common, such as acid pickling, which is to remove any undesirable oxide coatings. Industrial acid cleaning, which is to remove any unwanted deposit. Um, cleaning of oil refinery equipment, cleaning of heat exchangers, and acid treatment of oil wells. Um, the metals on this side offer the best resistance to hydrochloric uh, acid environments. Um, the ones in the middle offer some resistance, and then the ones on the far side are completely unsuitable for high, uh, hydrochloric acid exposure. That's a high chromium cast iron, carbon and alloy steels, stainless steels, aluminum, iridium, lithium, and zinc. Uh, there's a variety of factors that affect corrosion. Temperature, uh, as the temperature increases, the corrosion rates increase as well. Uh, chlorine contamination uh, in hydrochloric acid also accelerates corrosion. Uh, then aerogation of the acid in, in accelerates corrosion rates. And then hydrochloric acid that's contaminated with uh, ferric or cupric ions drastically changes corrosion rates of susceptible metals and causes otherwise resistant metals to become less resistant. Uh, this is the corrosion cell mechanism. So the oxidation half cell reaction is a, the anodic metal is broken down by the acid and combines with the chloride ions to produce a solid methyl known as a salt. Um, the, the reduction half cell reaction, the hydrogen atoms are deposited on the cathode and either form with other hydrogen atoms to produce a hydrogen gas or get absorbed into the metal. And this is a picture of zinc inside hydrochloric acid. Uh, the acid is consumed during this reaction if there's enough material for the acid to react with. And this is a, an example of hydrochloric acid damage on a steel pipe. This is hydrochloric acid damage on a storage tank. And this is an example of carbon steel in a hydrochloric acid environment. Uh, testing to see if hydrochloric uh, acid is present can be done by taking a sample of the liquid and, and testing the pH either by a PS test strips or by a pH tester. If the pH test indicates that the liquid is in the acidic range, you can then test for chlorides by adding silver nitrate to the liquid. If chlorides are present, then a cream color precipitate will be visible in the liquid. And then one of the best or most effective ways of dealing with hydrochloric acid is taking preventative measures. So applying adsorption inhibitors while the metal surface is still bare is the best method of prevention. Uh, adsorption, adsorption inhibitors then act to hinder the cathodic slash anodic electrochemical corrosion process. 
uh, many nitrogen-containing com compounds are effective inhib inhibitors, and uh, same with acetylenic alcohols. Um, you must vent all the hydrogen gas that is uh, created during any acid reactions to prevent any explosions, fires, or hydrogen damage to the metal, and thoroughly flush out the system to remove any leftover acid or chloride ions to prevent any damage to the base metal. All right, so I covered sulfuric acid and I researched it, and I found that it's a colorless to brown liquid, and it's dense and oily. And it's water miscible, which is basically it's hydrophilic, which means it's attracted to water. And it's usually produced from uh, sulfur dioxide. And it's also an efficient uh, drying agent for gases such as dihydrogen, molecular dihydrogen, and carbon dioxide. And it's also known as oil of vitriol and dipping acid. Um, its uses in environments are basically in fertilizers and uh, explosives. So just stay away from those if you don't want to like set yourself on fire or explode. Um, and it's in rayon, which is a manufactured cellulose fiber, which is a textile or a fabric. And it, it usually has a low volatility, but it's used in volatile acids like nitric acid and uh, hypochloric acid. And it, it's produced from biological decomposition, which is feces or poop. And it's, it's found mostly in sewage, in sewage type environments. Um, a fun fact I found out was humans make more than 100 million tons a year alone. Huh. Like, like just humans, not, not like manufactured through factories just by ourselves. And it's a common component in acid rain. Um, some susceptible metals are copper and copper alloys, uh, cemented carbides, silver, and rhodium. But some metals that are commonly used in uh, sulfuric acid environments are like palladium, tantalum, and lead. Um, but it's just, it's that because uh, they're mostly like, well, palladium is, it's not as resistant to sulfuric acid because like in a hot environment, it will corrode more. And so like tantalum and lead are good for like boiling uh, sulfuric acid. Um, it attacks most metals, but the rate of attack depends on the concentration of the acid. And uh, an indication of possible vulnerability is like how concentrated or dilute it is. So stainless steels resist either very dilute or concentrated acid. So like you could use that in a uh, sewage type environment. And zirconium resists up to 50% concentrated uh, sulfuric acid. Um, some factors that affect the corrosion, well the concentration will affect it of course. And the velocity of how fast your, um, your sulfuric acid is moving plays a major role in uh, what the corrosion is. So like, Thinking about that, lava is a major component, well, it has a major sulfuric acid component inside of it. And so, if you're around lava, you'll want to put metal in it or around it. Um, and the temperature of the environment is a major factor for sure. Um, the corrosion cell mechanism uh, active metals can displace hydrogen ions from acids, while inactive metals can't. And so, the hydrogen ac in acids is displaced by the metals produced to produce hydrogen gas. Um, sulfuric acid combined with iron creates sulf uh, iron sulfate and hydrogen gas, and that's what the formula shows. And this is basically what the reaction was showing in the last slide. This is a, uh, a iron bar put into a solution of sulfuric acid. And this is just a, a representation of what sulfuric acid would look like if you were just like carrying it around in your medicine cabinet. And this is some severe um, sulfuric acid corrosion. Um, I'm not sure uh, how long this pipe was in use, but I knew that it was in a sewage environment. Um, some testing and monitoring methods. Um, you can detect the acid as an anion 
And you can do that by using an acid acidometric analysis, which is a measurement of the pH level. And you can use ionic chromatography, um, which is an accurate, gives accurate quantitative results of the sulfate. And one thing you can do is you can avoid um, sulfuric acid corrosion through good feed preparation. And this is by removing contaminants through caustic treating, water washing, coalescing, and filtering. And you can maintain the acid concentration at the right level, at the right levels to uh, reduce the corrosion rate. Uh, I covered nitric acid corrosion. Nitric acid, HNO3, is one of the most widely used acids in the chemical processing industry. It's a very common one. Nitric acid is a highly acidic chemical that is an oxidizing agent which attacks most metals. Air oxidation of nitric oxide occurs at higher temperatures and is often found in acid rain. Nitric acid creates toxic fumes and moist air reacts with organic and plastic compounds and is particularly aggressive in most metals and even more so with copper. Cemented carbides, lead, tin, and silver are rapidly attacked by dilute HNO3, uh, gold, molybdenum, and high nickel ostentic cast iron suffer when under concentrated nitric oxide, HNO3. Stainless steels have broad applicability because the chromium content amplifies the effects of HNO3. Tantalum is inert to HNO3. Titanium has high resistance. Zirconium is even more resistant to HNO3. Hafnium is unaffected and niobium, niobium completely resists HNO3 up at and below temperatures of 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, indications of possible vulnerability. Generally, stainless steels are resistant to corrosion and nitric acid. Factors that affect this type of corrosion. In heat affected zones of welds, uh, corrosion of nitric acid can occur. Uh, corrosion will usually occur when the temperature reaches 600, and 600 to 800 degrees Celsius, followed by exposure to nitric acid. This represents corrosion of stainless steel. I found this chart online which shows the temperature in the HNO3 and the weight percentage. Examples of this corrosion, this was a piece of metal. This was a weld with, that I was just talking about. This is kind of what it looks like. It's hard to tell, but it's, that's the weld right there. More examples. Nitric acid can be very dangerous, especially to stainless steels. Here's a here's like a person's finger when they touched it, and then here's someone like some that touched some stainless steel. You can see it burn a hole in it. Uh, testing and monitoring electrochemical monitoring techniques such as AC impedance, electrochemical noise, and galvanic coupling. Control methods, uh, weight loss, DC polarization, and AC and penis techniques. Uh, formic acid, that's me. Uh, formic acid, picture of an ant here because there are a group of ants which produce formic acid. And so I'm sure most of y'all have experienced the, uh, the fire ant. Uh, formic acid is generally a colorless, corrosive liquid. It's a carboxylic acid. Uh, it is used a lot. It's used everywhere. Uh, dyeing textiles, manufactured insecticides, uh, refrigerants, they even use it um, for um, some pharmaceuticals and things like that. Um, it's got another name, sometimes it's called methanoic acid. It's got actually several other names it's known by. Uh, it's a very simple acid. Uh, Y'all heard of the crazy ant? No? Oh, the crazy ant. The crazy ant's the one on top there, and the fire ant's the one on the bottom. The crazy ant actually can use the formic acid and protect itself from the sting of the you know, fire ant. Kind of neat chemical warfare going on right there. <laughs> uh, formic acid, it's some bad stuff in high concentrations. It's really bad. Um, it's very aggressive uh, in chemical reactions. Um, it is an organic acid, um, it's flammable, uh, it can produce uh, toxic vapors, um, it can be harmful of course if swallowed, 
uh, skin and eye damage, it can damage your lungs just by breathing it in. Uh, it, can, it can cause some uh, long-term exposure, can uh, damage other organs in the body also. Uh, things that are susceptible, you wouldn't think about it a lot of times, but uh, steel and stainless, there are some stainless steels that are more susceptible than others. Um, plastics don't do well in this stuff. Um, aluminum, copper, uh, some of your high chromium nickel, uh, molybdenum stainlesses are okay. Titanium is kind of like the metal of choice. Uh, zirconium, tantalum, uh, silver actually is used a lot in Europe. Uh, corrosion cell mechanism, um, it, it can be both a, a, an oxidizing and a reducing agent. Of course, it's going to lose the hydrogens. Um, the hydrogen will come off and they're going to react with your metals. Uh, you're also going to produce uh, carbon dioxide. So you can produce a lot of gas with this. So if this thing's reacting a lot uh, and it's in an enclosed environment, you could possibly have some uh, pressure issues going on there. Um, some more reactions that show uh, formic acid. Formic acid as an oxidizing agent. Um, the formic acid is here. Uh, it can be reduced down to CO2. Once it loses these hydrogens, then you've got carbon dioxide. So you're talking about hydrogen gas and carbon dioxide gas. So those two can cause other problems within the system, as you've heard other people speak about. Um, acids and proton donors. Um, these are the three hydrogens that are going to react to those things. Uh, another corrosion cell mechanism here. Uh, you see here the hydrogen's coming off. You're electron free. You get CO2 gas produced. Okay. These can be recycled within the system as well. Uh, some more corrosion cell. This, this gets really complicated really fast. It's reacting to copper here. Uh, you can see there's a lot going on. This is atmospheric stuff. There's an aqueous layer and then there's your, your metal base down here. Lots of stuff going on. It's very reactive at, 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 in the gaseous phase, in the liquid phase. It's pretty bad stuff. Um, since most organic acids are not simply an oxidizing or reducing um, when they're in the environment, uh, corrosion occurs through a series of reactions rather than thinking of a single reaction. Uh, very corrosive to metals, very corrosive to tissues. Um, temperature, uh, temperature, concentration uh, affect the rate of reaction uh, in a big way. The higher it, hotter it gets, the higher the concentration, the more reaction you get. So, uh, corrosion rates, again, contaminants are what can drastically increase your uh, corrosion rate. Air or oxygen within the air, particularly ferrocons, uh, peracids, peroxides, all these things really reduce, uh, really increase your reaction with coppers. Uh, chlorides, um, with your organic acids like formic acid, will increase the corrosion of stainless steels. It's going to break down the um, A type of formicary corrosion uh, just kind of goes and so sinks in and can cause uh, this, uh, it kind of looks like an ant mound if you look at it. Kind of ways a side section of an ant mound. Wound carry corrosion, pity, stress crack corrosion, hydrogen embrittlement, intergranular, uh, all these types of corrosions are seen in organic acid environments. Uh, some more pictures uh, showing different concentrations. Uh, on your left, the concentration uh, was at 20% at around 40 degrees Celsius, and over here it's at uh, 60% at 40 degrees Celsius. This picture was the before picture. Um, monitoring testing, the ion chromatograph, uh, you can use, um, you can test for the concentration of acids, uh, pH testing, you can even use coupons to monitor uh, what's going on inside your systems. Uh, corrosion control methods, I read Lots of stuff. It was very specific to what um, what kind of container it was in, or what kind of, what concentration the acid, what temperature the acid was in. Uh, material selection was important. Of course, you can use coatings. Uh, some, sometimes they use liners in the tanks. Uh, there was the use of inhibitors. Uh, keep down the contaminants was important, and watch the temperature of the uh, product. 
Alright, I did hydrofluoric acid, um, which is a colorless uh, and poisonous uh, inorganic acid um, that's highly corrosive and extremely reactive. Hydrofluoric acid is extremely similar to hydrofluoric acid when the acid reacts with the metal, uh, a hydrogen and a fluoride is produced, which can lead to hydrogen attack, hydrogen embrittlement, and can show uh, corrosion as blistering, pitting, cracking, or flaking. Um, Hydrofluoric acid is used in the industry for, sim for similar things as hydrochloric acid. It's used in acid pickling, uh, acid treating of wells, but it's, uh, it has the unique ability to dissolve glass, so hydrofluoric acid is used to etch designs into glass as well. Uh, the metals closest to me offer the best resistance, and then the, the ones in the middle offer some resistance. But uh, aluminum, carbon, carbon, and alloy steels, tin, titanium, niobium, and zirconium are completely unsuitable for hydrofluoric acid environments. Uh, similar factors affect hydrofluoric acids, such as the temperature increases, so does the corrosion rates. Aeration of the acid increases the corrosion rates, and uh, hydrofluoric acid has contaminated with ferric, cupric or chlorides, ferric ions, cupric ions, or chlorides increase the corrosion rates of all susceptible metals. Uh, the corrosion cell mechanism is extremely similar to hydrogen uh, chloride acid, and it's almost identical. The oxidation half cell reaction, the anodic metal is broken down by the acid and combines with fluoride ions to produce a leftover solid. And the reduction half cell reaction, the hydrogen atoms are deposited on the cathode and either form with other hydrogen atoms to produce the hydrogen gas or get absorbed into the metal. Um, this shows the effect of acid pickling using hydrofluoric acid. Uh, this is um, a steel container before it is pickled, and that's it after. And then this is an example of a stainless steel bolt that was in a hydrofluoric acid environment. Um, testing to see if hydrofluoric acid is present can be done by taking a sample of the liquid and testing the pH by a pH meter. Um, if the pH indicates that it's in the acidic range, you can test for the presence of fluorides using a fluoride test strip. Whichever color the, strip, the test strip turns corresponds to the amount of fluorides in the sample measured in parts per million. Uh, dealing with hydrofluoric acid uh, requires the same preventative measures as uh, dealing with hydrochloric acid. The application of adsorption inhibitors when the metal is bare, the same inhibitors are used for both hydrofluoric acid and hydrochloric acid. Um, alkali, um, amines, saturated and unsaturated nitrogen ring compounds, and amines condensed with Ethylene oxide all help prevent hydrofluoric acid corrosion. You need to vent all hydrogen gas that is created during the reaction to prevent any explosions or hydrogen damage and thoroughly flush out the system to remove any leftover acid or fluoride ions to prevent damage to the base metal. All right, I covered phosphoric acid. Um, basically what it is, it's a syrupy tribasic acid, which uh, tribasic means it's uh, it has three replaceable hydrogen atoms. Um, it's used in the preparation